toxins today are going to be built upon each other. And so when you hear the first part this morning, you'll certainly want to come back, you need to come back, to hear the conclusion for this series tonight. It's good to see Tom and Yvetta Edwards, friends of this congregation, friends with many in this congregation for a number of years. They've relocated back to this area. So it's good to see them. Good to, again, see all of our visitors. If there's anything that we can do for you spiritually, please don't hesitate to let us know. We want to get right into the lesson this morning. Notice what we're going to be dealing with, this question. Who delivered Jesus to be crucified? Who delivered Jesus to be crucified? Do you know the answer to that? I think sometimes we think we know. It seems pretty simple, but really when you get into the biblical answer, it becomes much more complex. It becomes very profound. And so this is going to be the basis of our studies today, also the burden for those studies. Who delivered Jesus to be crucified? We want to begin by looking at three observations. Notice these with me quickly. There's no question as to whether or not Jesus was crucified. You go through the scriptures and on numerous occasions it will tell you they led him out to be crucified. In fact, you remember when Paul is standing before Agrippa and he has just taught concerning our Lord's crucifixion. And he says, King Agrippa knows these things. He says, these things were not done in a corner in Acts 26 and verse 26. So this was a public execution. There is no doubt as to whether or not Jesus was crucified. Also, his death did not take him off guard nor catch him by surprise. Sometimes you'll hear people on the radio, on television, and they'll act as if Jesus didn't even know what he was doing here, didn't understand why he came. Again, our Lord's death did not take him by surprise. I want you to turn with me to one context. This alone will prove it. In Matthew 16, look if you will, Matthew 16, and let's read one verse together, verse 21. And this is going to happen in the very next chapter, chapter 17, verses uh, 22 and 23, and also it will take place again in chapter 20. But what's taking place is Jesus is bringing his disciples together. He's teaching them what is going to happen when he goes to Jerusalem. And look at this specifically in Matthew 16 and verse 21. It says, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. So Jesus has taught his disciples, this is what's going to happen. We're headed towards Jerusalem. When we get there, these things are going to take place. Well, also consider this. In his death, our blessed Lord bore our sins in his body on the tree. Familiar language because this is taken from 1 Peter 2 and verse 24. That's what Peter tells us. That Jesus bore our sins, not his own. He bore our sins in his body on the tree, on that cross. You remember, he wasn't crucified for any wrong that he did. In fact, in Hebrews 4 and verse 15, he was tempted in all points like as we, yet without sin. The reality was he died for us. 1 Peter 3 and verse 18, the just died for the unjust. Jesus was the just one. He died for you and me, for the unjust. We're the ones who sinned. Well, with this in mind, let's notice now a quick word study. Here it is, our English word delivered. 
is translated from the Greek word paradidomi. This Greek word is translated, delivered, sometimes betrayed. But once again, keep this in mind. Also, this word is a compound word. Para means up and didomi means to give. Thus, notice, the literal meaning is to give up. The idea is to betray, to hand over, or deliver. So again, remember the question we're asking. Who delivered Jesus to be crucified? Who gave him over? Who gave him up? Who betrayed him? Well, notice the multiple biblical answers. The first one we're all familiar with. Judas betrayed his Lord. Judas delivered him up to be crucified. Consider the passage that was read a few moments ago. Turn up with us to Matthew 26. Look in Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verses 14. We're going to read through verse 16. It's not going through verse 25. Matthew 26, verses 14 through 16. But look what this says. Now, this was read earlier. It says, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him? Notice that. If I deliver him to you. And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. So from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Judas delivered Jesus to be crucified. You'll find the parallel account of that in Mark 14, verses 10 through 21. And remember at the end of that context in Mark, remember what Jesus said, better for that man had he never been born. He's talking about Judas, talking about the fact that Judas would betray him. Judas would give him up. Judas would deliver him to be crucified. This next point, thus Judas delivered, betrayed, handed over Jesus to the chief priests and scribes. Remember, they wanted him, the chief priests and the scribes, out of the way. They wanted Jesus, they wanted to be rid of him. So Judas, one of his own disciples, is going to deliver him. Think about this question, why did Judas do this? When we look at these different individuals, these different groups... I think it's very important to ask this question. Not simply, who did it, but why did they do it? And there's really one answer. When you look at Judas, Judas delivered Jesus to be crucified because of greed. Turn with me to John 12. You see the passage up here, John 12. Read with me these few verses In John 12, beginning in verse 4, reading through verse 6. Notice what it says about Judas. It says, But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Now notice verse 6 carefully. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box and he used to take what was put in it. Judas was the, quote, treasurer, if you will, of the disciples. He had the money bag. He had the money box. And the Bible tells us he wasn't concerned about the poor when he says, why wasn't this perfume, this fragrant oil sold and given to the poor? He's not concerned about the poor at all. He wanted it sold put into the money box so he could take it out. Judas betrayed Jesus. Judas delivered him up to be crucified because of greed. Nothing surprising in this. We all understand this. We'll look at the next answer. The chief priests and the scribes. Now, we won't read every verse 
But turn with me to Mark, Mark 10. Notice what we find in this context. In Mark, the 10th chapter, reading just a couple of verses here, verses 32 through verse 34. Notice what it says here. It says, Now when they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was going before them, and they were amazed, and, they had, and, and as they followed, they were afraid. Then he took the twelve aside again and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed, now notice this, to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. Stop there for just a moment. You see what Jesus is saying? We know that Judas delivered Jesus to the chief priests and to the scribes. But now Jesus is telling us that these, once Judas delivered him to them, they're going to deliver him to the Gentiles. The end of verse 33. And verse 34, And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. It's interesting in John's account. In John 18, when we see the chief priests and the scribes come and stand before Pilate, remember what they say in that context? If he were not a malefactor, if he were not an evil man, we would not have delivered him. Well, he wasn't an evil man. He had done absolutely nothing wrong. But, again, Judas delivered Jesus to be crucified. The chief priests and the scribes, they delivered him up to be crucified. Thus, the chief priests and the scribes delivered Jesus to Pilate. Why did they do this? And again, just like in Judas's case, there's a very biblical reason given as to why they did this. Envy. They delivered Jesus up because of envy. They were so envious of him, they wanted him out of their way. They didn't want the Romans to come and take their place, take their country. But look at one of these verses. They both say the same thing. Look at Mark, since we're still in Mark. Look at Mark, the 15th chapter, and verse 10. Mark 15 and verse 10. It says, For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. That's talking about Pilate. Pilate knew. He knew these men. He knew they had no charges worthy of apprehending him, bringing Jesus before him. He knew the reason why they brought him. It was because of envy. So Judas delivered Jesus up. Why? Because of greed. The chief priests and the scribes, they delivered Jesus up to be crucified. Why? Because of envy. Well, one last individual this morning, Pilate. Notice what the Bible teaches us here concerning Pilate. In Matthew 27, let's read verses 24 through verse 26. And in every one of these cases, regarding Judas, regarding the chief priests and the scribes, regarding Pilate, there are many more passages which say the same thing. But for sake of time, brevity, we've just sifted out a couple of these. So read this with me. Notice what it says, Matthew 27 verses 24 and following, when Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, His blood be upon us and our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. There's that word again. Judas delivered him. The chief priests and the scribes delivered him. Now the Bible tells us that Pilate delivered Jesus to be crucified. Well, notice 
Thus Pilate delivered Jesus to the soldiers in order to crucify him. That's what the biblical account, that's what the biblical record tells us. Well, the question, why did he, Pilate, give him up? Why did he hand him over? Now notice, think for a moment. We understand Judas because of greed. We understand the chief priests and the scribes because of envy. I believe you can put your finger on one reason regarding Pilate. Why did he do this? And it's really something we don't want to hear because if we're not careful, we can do the same thing. We can crucify Christ afresh as Hebrews 6 and verse 6 teaches us and for the same reason. Why did Pilate do it? Cowardice. Pilate, when you boil it down, was a coward. He refused to take a stand even though he knew what stand he ought to take. Turn with me and let's read in Luke 23. Turn to Luke 23. I want you to see what happens here. Beginning in verse 23, we'll read through verse 25. But notice what this says. Luke 23, beginning in verse 23. It says, But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. And the voices of these men and of the chief priests prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested. And he released to them the one they requested, uh, who for rebellion and murder had been thrown into prison. But he delivered Jesus to their will. That last statement is so sad. He delivered Jesus to their will. You know what they wanted to do with him. They wanted him put to death. This is going back now to the people. The chief priests, the elders, the scribes has stirred up the crowd. Pilate has constantly told them, I can find no fault with this man. I'm going to scourge him. I'm going to release him. They will ultimately say, if you release this man, you're no friend of Caesar. Well, notice cowardice. Pilate buckles under pressure. Pilate, he really wanted to do two things. He wanted to release Jesus, but he also wanted to please the multitude. Turn with me to this last verse. In Mark 15 and verse 15, and this really paints a picture for all of us today. Because we need to understand you can't do both. You can't live the Christian life and still try to please this world and please everyone who's in it. We're going to have to make a choice. And look what happened in Mark 15 and verse 15. It says, So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. There's Pilate's problem. He wants to do two things. He wants to please everyone. He knows this man is innocent. He knows this man has done no crime worthy of death. He wants to release him. In fact, in Luke 23 and verse 20, that's what the Bible tells us is that Pilate wanted to release Jesus. In John 19 and verse 12, Pilate made efforts to release Jesus. And in Acts 3 and verse 13, written after the fact, the Bible tells us that he had decided to release Jesus. But the reality was, even though he wanted to, even though he had made some efforts, even though he had decided determined to release him, he crucified him. He delivered him up to be crucified. Pilate, you can't serve two masters. Remember Matthew 6 and verse 24? That's what we're told. No man can serve two masters. Jesus taught us in Mark 12 and verse 30. You're either for me or you're against me. You either gather with me or you scatter abroad. 
So as we look this morning at the beginning of this lesson, really these do not surprise us. When we talk about Judas, when we understand the chief priests and the scribes and also Pilate, all had a hand in delivering Jesus up. We're looking at the human side. Tonight, when we come back, we want to look at the divine side. We're going to learn two things, at least be reminded of these. And when you couple this morning's lesson with tonight's, you see the gospel story in all its wonder, in all its beauty. Pilate, the chief priests, the scribes, Judas, all delivered Jesus for different reasons. Judas because of greed the chief priest because of envy, Pilate because of cowardice. Let's understand, as we're warned concerning those things biblically, why we are. They can cause us, as it did those individuals, to turn our back on the Lord, to not name Him in public, to be ashamed of Christ in this ungodly generation. Remember Mark 8 and verse 38? Jesus taught us not to be ashamed of him in this, you know, adulterous generation. We're not to be ashamed of the gospel. Romans 1 and verse 16. It's God's power unto salvation. We're not to be ashamed of the name that we wear as a Christian. 1 Peter 4 and verse 16. This morning, Think with me because we all delivered Jesus in one sense to be crucified because of our sin. That's why Jesus went to the cross. It was because of sin and as we've said, not His sin, our sin. And so by virtue of our own sin, we have delivered Jesus to be crucified. Let's right that wrong. The Bible teaches us that we can be forgiven of sin. As we hear the gospel, the good news concerning the Christ, God's power unto salvation, when we unite it with faith, when we repent of our sins, change our mind concerning sin, when we name Him as Lord, as Master of our lives, when we're immersed into Christ. Sins are washed away. If you need to take care of those things this morning, let's do those things right now. Maybe we haven't been living as we should, as valiantly, as fervently for Jesus as we once did. If that's the case, let's repent of that. Let's come back right now while we stand and as we sing.